Hello everybody, I hope you're having a good Sunday afternoon. Um, obviously, most of us are indoors today um, and I did say, as promised, that I would teach you how to read music and I will uh, post this video on Facebook now at five o'clock, as promised. Um, if you've got a clarinet or a saxophone or a recorder at home or even on a keyboard, if you don't know how to read music, that is the main aim of today's video. I will be talking and playing for about 15 minutes and then I'll come and join you another time. Um, so enjoy the show. I hope you pick up a lot from today. Hopefully I can get through how you read the eight notes on the stave. Um, the stave is the five lines that you see when you look at notational music. So um, we'll start off by looking at the stave. So if we just take a view, you've got five lines and then if you know your alphabet from a to g which obviously everybody should do um you have got the notes going in ascending order a b c d e f g so if i show you where a is on the stave it lies between the second line and the third line and then the note above it is a b so a B, the B lies in the middle of the five lines on the stave. Remember, the stave is what we call the five lines of music. We have notes on the lines and notes in between. So we've looked at where A is on the stave. This is where B is on the stave. Remember, B is in the middle of the five lines. So line one, two, three above. A is in between line two and three. Then we've got C, which is in, in between lines three and four. And then we've got D on the fourth line up. And then we've got E in between line four and line five, following on to F, which is on the top line of the stave, line number five. So I'll repeat, A, B, C, D, E, F. If we go higher than F, that's a G. And then you go back up to A, B, and you'll notice in music when you look at it that those notes sit above the fifth line. So there are notes above the fifth line as there are notes below the first line. Now we started on A. As I said to you, the notes go from A to G. So below A is G. Below G is F. Below F is E. Then you have the space below the bottom line being D. And then you have C. And then you have B and then you have A. And you'll notice on a piece of music when you look at it that the notes will go below the first line on the stave. So just to recap, a stave has five lines. It's how we read music. The, music, the musical notes go from A to G. And then it starts all over again. So you could call that the musical alphabet, A to G. On the bottom line, line one is an E. On the first space is an F. On the second line is a G. On the second space is an A. On the third line is a B. In the third space is a C. On the fourth line is a D. In the fourth space is an E, on the top line is an F. F, G, A, B, C, going up further up the stave. E, D, C, B, A, going down below the first line of the stave. If you look, there is F, A, C, E, that spells face. To remind you of the notes in the spaces on the stave 
And then if you remember this um, saying, every green bus drives fast or every good boy deserves favour, then you will remember the pattern of the notes. But it really is as simple as A, B, C, D, E, F, G. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. There are eight notes in an octave. And after your eight notes, you start again. But remember, they can go up the stave and down the stave. Okay, so hopefully now, when you look at a piece of music, you will recognise some of these notes. It does take time, and whatever instrument you're choosing to use um, will be different fingerings on that instrument. But for the purpose of today, I'm going to be um, playing from saxophone player book. So if those of you who've got saxophone, please join in. Um, and we're going to start, first of all, by looking at the parts of the alto. Okay, so you've got the mouthpiece, which on the mouthpiece there is a reed. The reed vibrates against the plastic mouthpiece, and that is what creates the sound. The sound is created with you blowing the air from your diaphragm and your lungs through your mouth into the saxophone. Obviously, with cleanliness, make sure that you're not blowing anybody else's saxophone. You are not sharing saxophones, so if you're going to be watching my videos, make sure that it is your instrument that you use. And before you play each time, you need to disinfect the mouthpiece. Milton is good, um, or if you've not got Milton, just a mild disinfectant. If you haven't got mild disinfectant, then you can just put it under the water tap. But please do not share your instruments with anybody else. Um, obviously, after play... Then go and wash your hands. Make sure before you're playing, you're washing your hands as well. And um, obviously abide by the same rules as we've all got at the moment with um, not spreading diseases. Um, obviously, we're all aware that once you blow into this instrument, your particles will, of spit or air will be going into the instrument and you don't want to be obviously sharing that with anybody else. So keep it to yourself enjoy the time that you have um, when I do these videos and if you're watching this and just learning how to read music um, then try and find your saxophone or clarinet or flute or piano or just sing or just enjoy the videos um, and then next time when I'm on then you'll be able to play along or just watch okay so we've already said the mouthpiece which has a reed on it disinfected before use this is a ligature which holds the reed in place and then you have got the neck of the saxophone which has got the um this part here i'm just trying to think what it was called it's the octave key which changes the lower notes to the higher notes so when you press this then you can go using the same fingerings on the saxophone, you can go from low to high. So you've got the key screw here, which holds the reed in place. Don't do that too tight, but just enough to hold this so that you can still play it, okay? Now if I just take the mouthpiece off, oh, you have to screw this tight as well down here so that it's not gonna come off. If I take this mouthpiece off, before anybody starts to play a saxophone, the first thing you always say is, can you get sound out of it? So if you're playing recorder, clarinet, the same thing. Take the mouthpiece off or the top of the recorder off and see if you can get a sound off it. Now, I'll give a demonstration with a recorder in a moment. And next time I'm on, I'll have my clarinet as well for you to, to have a look at. And I might even play from play on the clarinet next time. And the time after that, I might play on the recorder. So I'll alternate between all the instruments that I have. So blowing from the diaphragm, okay, nice deep breath in. And then you keep your lips on the bottom of the reed and then slightly clench the top of the mouthpiece between your teeth and put your lip over the top. 
And with your diaphragm tucked in, you're blowing the air through the reed so that it vibrates and then out the other end so that you have got a sound. We just had a slight pause there, I do apologise. Um, my son, who's doing the video in this evening, was shaking a little bit because the noise was quite funny. So you're not looking for a perfect noise with this. I'm going to do it again. You might get a high pitch, you might get a low pitch, you might get somewhere in between. It really doesn't matter as long as you've got a sound. The importance of the sound is we know then you're using your diaphragm correctly in order to produce the sound. When you've got the sound, then we're ready to move on and we can play a couple of tunes together before I finish this video today. Okay, so here's the sound again. Pucker up your lips. Breathe from your diaphragm. Okay, so once you've produced your sound, then you can put the mouthpiece back on to the neck of the saxophone. Make sure it's not too firmly on, but you're getting it straight so that the reed is level with the top of your mouth. This is called the neck strap, so you may need to adjust the neck strap. Um, clarinets don't need one, nor does flute, um, but any slightly heavier instruments, if you've got a tenor saxophone at home as well, you'll have to use an extra four. So um, just to carry on from the different parts of the saxophone, where I've placed my thumb there, you'll notice this register key lifts up and that will produce the low notes when it's down and the high notes when it's up. And then if you look at my fingers, as I go down the saxophone, I'm using my one, two, three, four, five, six fingers, and then I'll use my little finger for the bottom note. I'm not going to tell you what those notes are because we're only going to be really dealing with the first six today. And then obviously I can play your few tunes as well. So that more or less is what you need to know to make a start with playing the saxophone, just simple music. This is the bell rim. This part is the bell. This is the bell brace. And this is the bow, the bottom is the bow. Okay, then you've got the bow cap and the key guards down the bottom. And then there's a place where you put your thumb and it's important with a saxophone, you use your left hand at the top and your right hand at the bottom and get positioned well so that you are comfortable when playing. The other important thing is, is make sure, like I said, that you're not, your neck's not up right like that and you're comfortable in playing. Okay, so that's all about the saxophone. Okay, if we just take a look at this. The reed, the mouthpiece. The neck, the ligature, the case. Remember, we're disinfecting all of this before we play. We're not sharing instruments with anybody. And we're just using this in the comfort in, of our own homes whilst we're off during this time. This is your strap that you put around your neck. so Because the saxophone can be quite heavy and you will find you'll start to ache. Make sure you're in a comfortable position to play. I'm sitting on a chair, you might want to stand up, um, but it's important that you get comfortable because if, if you're not, you're going to start aching quite quickly. Okay, so we've talked about the reed, that's the tip of the reed, then you've got the side of the reed, then you've got a heart of a reed. They come in different thicknesses, you can have a thickness one, two or three. I'm playing with a three. Um, because I've mastered the use of my diaphragm really well and a three is harder to blow but will create another a better sound sorry so go we're just going to focus in on the part of the body that you need to use when you're blowing the saxophone I've already said it is the diaphragm it's your abdomen and you're inhaling 
and you're exhaling, you're not using your chest area. It's important that we inflate and deflate with the diaphragm and that's where your power will come from and the strength will come from, okay? When you blow into the mouthpiece, okay? So when we have a full inhalation, we lower our ribs in the diaphragm. So your ribs go into your hips. And then when you have a full exhalation, you lower your ribs in the diaphragm, so you're pushing your ribs up. Okay, so you're inhaling and then you're exhaling out. So the air will fill all of your saxophone and come out the bell at the end. Okay, so going back to my mouthpiece, because it's important we disinfect, like I said. So at the end, this is what you need to do. At the beginning, you will know what to do as well. So this is the ligature, this is the mouthpiece. This is the reed, okay? I did say I was using a number three, I'm using a number two. So that's the thickness of it. There's a one, two, and a three. There's possibly a four as well, and five. If you place the reed onto the mouthpiece, like that, you must make sure with your thumb that it's level to the plastic tip. And then without, because it's wood, you have to be really careful that you don't split it. Without too much trouble, you put the ligature gently over the top, hold it in place with your thumb and push it, your other thumb to pull the ligature down and then use these screws to screw it up. I've already talked about if it's your first time of playing. Okay, so you're gonna pull your tummy muscles in and you're gonna pull them in slightly so that it's just under control. And then you push every bit of air that you've got out of your lungs, close your mouth around the mouthpiece and slowly take in the deepest breath that you can take in and you breathe through your nose as you exhale the air through the saxophone. Okay, so do not bulge your shoulders too much. If you take Deep enough breath, you will feel your back and your sides expand. So it's good for your posture as well, playing an instrument. And your diaphragm is now working, so you're able to play. So the third thing you do is you hold your breath so that you can squeeze a little bit of air out at a time to keep you constant playing the music. That will stop you from... You're not going to get this straight away, but once you've mastered this, this will stop it from sounding really jerky. Okay, fourth, in the same amount of time again, you breathe out through your mouth. This is your exhalation. The mouth, obviously, through the saxophone, the air will come out the other end and produce the sound. This time, not just the sound we've produced already, but it will be the sound of these notes when you place your fingers onto the buttons on the saxophone. <laughs> to do is to stop that jerk that I've just obviously done because I was trying to prove to you that you need to be able to take in that deep breath and blow the air gradually. Now to finish off we're going to play a couple of tunes. I'll go back to the stave again, remind you of the notes so that if you've got music books at home you can have a go in between now and the next time I do this video for you. I hope you've enjoyed the show. Thank you to my son for doing the video um, and I'll see you soon. Okay. Okay, I'm just going to play the notes from D all the way up the stave. If you look at the music as we're as I'm playing, you'll hear the saxophone in the background. <laughs> that stave that I showed you at the beginning starting with the space below the bottom line and going in between on the lines in the spaces on the lines in the spaces and that I've just played for you is a, is all the notes going up from D up to G and I've had to use the register key the, the key I showed you at the beginning 
to get to the higher notes. Now, I'm just going to do the first four notes and then I'll play a tune for you. So your B, which I explained at the beginning, is one finger down. Your A is two fingers down. Your G is three fingers down. And your F is four fingers down. You see the notes at the bottom. Remember, B is in the middle line. A is just in the space between. Below it, G is on the second up from the bottom line and F is on the bottom space. Now it's quite simple to start off with. It's the first line to Yellow Submarine on a B. Jingle bells on a B. Tender, also on a B. Chopsticks. Okay, we're on an A now. Okay, I'm going to play a long A. on the streets of London on a B and then an A. Strangers in the night. Playing the beginnings to the songs as we progress through these videos I'll be playing a lot more with you so we're starting basic we're going to move forward to more complicated um, thank you um, for joining us this evening I'm just going to focus just on the stage before we go like I said I would remember at the bottom is an E alphabetical order F G A B C D, E, F, and we'll see you next time.